let's get started. And I couldn't be more excited to introduce our uh, star speakers. I'll start from the left with Katie Nova. She's a former outdoor and museum educator, now bringing her passion for communications and storytelling to the education tech space as a manager of the Global Learn team here at Smart Technology. And she's focused on supporting and celebrating schools around the world that are doing amazing work. Katie's lucky that education storytelling is part of her every day. Welcome, Katie. We're very fortunate to have here with us Dr. Amanda Holsworth. She has 17 years of experience and she has led the communication efforts for public and private K-12 schools, colleges, universities. She launched in she launched in 2016 her own firm, which is Communica uh, Whole Works Communication, which is a global award-winning education PR, branding and marketing agency that's serving schools, university of all sizes. Through the use of storytelling, the Whole Works Communications team has helped clients refine their brands, increase enrollment, retain students, raise funding and develop and evaluate successful and impactful strategic communication plans. Amanda earned both a Master of Arts in a Strategic Public Relations and a Doctor of Education in Organizational Change and Leadership from the University of Southern California. She hosts the Storytelling for Schools Room each Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern on Clubhouse. So I hope you can join her there this coming Friday and welcome Dr. Amanda. Thank you, Val. Hi, everyone. And our last superstar guest speaker is Giancarlo Brodo. Giancarlo is a global education catalyst. He engages with government officials, policy influencing organizations, throughout uh, uh, thought leaders, school system decision makers, and research to gain insights and influence trends in the education sector. He has served on the informal advisory group for the Skills for Social Progress Project, OECD. He sat on the board of directors for C21 Canada, an organization promoting 21st century learning. Um, he's also the founder of GOLA, a secure place for high level education officials globally to collaborate and make genuine policy recommendations. And he's the current, um, and currently is the chair of the Samuel B. Lee um, Life Skills. He's a global advisor for smart technologies and the executive director and co-founder of Catalyst, an international organization accelerating education transformation by turning ideas into action. Welcome, Jen Carlin. Awesome. And with, uh, without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Katie. Awesome. Thank you so much, Valentina. I'm thrilled to be here um, with Giancarlo, with Amanda today, uh, and with all of you seeing some familiar names uh, joining us here today. So it's, it's great to see all of you. Thank you for being here. This webinar is one in a series that we put on here at SMART, uh, focusing on a lot of different ways that we've wanted to uh, support you and, and give some really great information um, for schools uh, across the world and, and across North America, for sure. Really uh, focused on a few different things. We've had some topics around professional development um, and around a few different topics. And today, of course, is all about storytelling. And before we get into sort of the meat of that part, we wanted to showcase a tool that we've been sharing at many of these webinars that really helps you sort of ground what is happening at your school today. Where are we? And how might we prioritize action moving forward for impactful outcomes across our school community? So at SMART, we've developed with a lot of input from global research, a tool that we call the EdTech Assessment Tool, designed to help give you the full picture of not only where you're at from a technology perspective, but strategic planning and professional development, and really give you some great information on where you're starting from, uh, you know, what's your story today, and help you prioritize moving forward. So that tool gives you an opportunity to self-assess where you're at in five different categories, including technology integration, blended or hybrid learning, strategic development, and professional development. And you're able to rate yourself uh, on a bunch of scales to really help get you thinking about what goes into strategic planning in my school. 
what do I need to think about when I'm considering the integration of pedagogy and technology? You're able to rate yourself across a whole bunch of different spectrums. And then we're able to give you a robust report that says, here's how you measure up against other people that look like you who have taken this same survey. And then we're able to give you some recommendations on how to move forward. We also give an opportunity within that tool to share with colleagues. So making it very easy to connect your results to a colleague's results. If you want to, at the, the click of a button, send a, a different module over to a colleague so that they can complete their part of the story, their part of the assessment, uh, you, your results will be layered on top of each other. And you get an aggregated report that shows in a really broad way across your school or across your district, where are things at today? And then we give some recommendations that are research-based and based on the almost 2,000 responses that we've had to date within this tool of what are the best places to take action for outcome. We'll remind you about this tool again at the end of the webinar, but really wanted to throw it there at the beginning as a great option for the framework of what's happening today at your district. If you're looking to identify where to invest next, where to prioritize activities or really, you know, get a, a better understanding from across your organization of where are we at? What's the foundation of our story today? And what do teachers think? What do leaders think? What does my IT manager think? All across the board, you can get that great input and prioritize for action and for storytelling moving forward. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Giancarlo to lay some of the foundation of what we're gonna be going through uh, in today's session. And uh, over to you, John Carlo. Oh, thanks so much, uh, Katie. And you know, one of the uh, questions that's in there is around uh, how you engage with your uh, parent community, your student communities, uh, and your teachers communities. And uh, what it does is instigates conversation uh, that may or may not be happening. And it's one of the things that, uh, as I looked at the reports and analysis from uh, you know thousands of schools and school systems that have answered this, that's one of the areas is how well we uh, take note and have conversations within our schools and hear those voices. And uh, I bring that up because this is what we're talking about here today. Uh, it's all about storytelling and storytelling, you know, and I've taken a lot of notes off of Amanda comes from, you know, being attuned to uh, understanding where we're at. And I'm not the expert in this arena. Miss Amanda Holsworth is and it's been a pleasure uh, to get to know her over the last few months. Um, we actually met on that new rising platform called Clubhouse, as Amanda mentioned. And if you haven't uh, seen it, you know, definitely check out the Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you'll see uh, lots of lots of ways you can engage with a variety of different topics. Uh, but what we're going to be doing today, uh, as uh, was mentioned earlier, I'm the executive director, co-founder of Catalyst. And what we do is we convene uh, government officials, school system leaders, school leaders all across the globe in what we like to call Catalyst experiences. And that's what we're going to put you through today. And what they are is designed designed to give you an opportunity to both get insight, but then you immediately start integrating or applying it into your own context with others that are across North America. And actually, I should do a shout out to Mexico, who's in the audience as well. Uh, so we have the international folks with us here today. Uh, and you're going to be put into small breakout groups. And so as mentioned earlier, Valentina uh, mentioned this, uh, what we're doing right now is being recorded. But when you go into your breakout groups, nothing is being recorded there. We want to uh, preserve, uh, you know, the, it's a safe space for you to be with other colleagues and peers from across the country. Uh, to start internalizing and applying some of these concepts and i'll be here to kind of take you through the breakout rooms and back to the main stage you don't have to worry you don't have to press anything we will automatically be doing that for you so what we're going to be doing is starting off with amanda who's going to start priming us with some insight around storytelling for schools give us some things to start thinking about and then we're going to be going into breakout groups where we're going to be starting applying some of these concepts so with that it's my pleasure to hand it over to miss amanda holdsworth who's going to take us on a little journey on thinking about storytelling for schools. Over to Amanda. Thank you so much, Giancarlo. I so appreciate the opportunity. As Giancarlo mentioned, um, let me just see my little pop-ups here. We met on Clubhouse. And if anybody's been on Clubhouse, it's all about storytelling. So we obviously connected very quickly with that. And so this is really an opportunity for you to work on your stories and hear from others. So let's, let's go through these slides. Oh, is it not working now? There we go. 
So as Val had mentioned, I've worked in school PR, branding, and marketing. I've actually been doing it for over 20 years. I spent 17 years within schools, public schools and private schools, um, parochial schools, all of that. And I've been consulting now full-time for several years. And so I get the, the pleasure of working not only with K through 12, actually pre-K through 12, but also universities around the world. And our basis of foundation of our agency, and this is, goes back probably eight or 10 years when I was a communications director, was storytelling. Because because everything feeds out from stories. And I learned this from a communications director friend of mine almost 20 years ago, and we were using this in our ad campaign. And from there, I've been as social media has been developed and marketing tactics have been developed. And of course, PR, which is my background and my baby, stories are really the hallmark of it. So when we think about storytelling, that's really using a narrative to communicate your message and humanize your brand. So think about that. Communicate your message, so the message you want to get across, and then also humanize your brand. It's not just about stats and facts, particularly with schools, right? And storytelling can help your ideal customer connect with your brand. Now, this is so important with schools because those potential families and students, and this works even if you're in a public school district, they want to see themselves in your school community. They want to see how they can, their children can transform. The students want to see how they can participate in different activities, what's in it for them. So storytelling um, shares those experiences and it does not come across it like an old school advertising that's telling you why you're so great. Or as we kind of joke in school communications, we go back 15 years or 10 years even, and everybody had a rigorous curriculum with diverse student body. And that may be true, but let's show them. And there's so many different ways. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that today, but before we get into it, I wanna read this quote. This is from Dr. Paul Zak. Um, back in about 2013, he did a study and he actually did a study on how storytelling affects your brain. And it's, he, it's a wonderful review. Um, Harvard Business Review did an article on this. I have lots of sources. If anybody's interested, contact me afterwards because he also did a wonderful way of storytelling with his research to make it digestible. But this is what he says. And I want to read this to you and just think about it for a minute. As social creatures who regularly affiliate with strangers, stories are an effective way to transmit important information and values from one individual or community to the next. Stories that are personal and emotionally compelling engage more of the brain and thus are better remembered than simply stating a set of facts. Now, I have to be honest, I'm a big fan of my marketing of using things like infographics and bold visuals. But when we think about this, you know, Dr. Zach talks about how stories keep our attention and they actually help release oxytocin. So it's like a neurochemical in the brain. So when people are hearing stories and it all it takes is a little hook to keep them engaged, their attention span is going to last longer and they're going to be more likely to get to when you're talking about the benefits of your school or the things that make your school unique. Now, Dr. Zach goes on and he continues. He said there are two key aspects to an effective story. First, it must capture and hold our attention. The second thing an effective story does is transport us into the character's world. Think about how that can translate into your school community. And one of the things that I love working best about in education is that there are endless stories, endless stories. As I was sharing with Giancarlo and Val and Katie earlier, as we got on the phone, I was actually on the phone with my daughter's guidance counselor, the head of the guidance services for the district, talking about how they can better tell the stories of the wonderful things they're doing for parents and students behind the scenes. So when we talk about the storytelling, it's no different than the story arc that most of us learned in school. And you know, it doesn't even have to be formalized, but what is it that can capture and hold the attention? Right? Who are those ideal families that we want to have? Who are those target people that we want to have in our school and our district? Think about what type of hook you can get to capture and hold the attention. And then the second thing it does, it transports us into the character's world. So as we're telling the stories of the alumni from our school or district, the students, the faculty, the staff, the parents, we are connecting in ways with potential families, and this can go deeper. I mean, we can do a whole nother session on this with fundraising and government um, officials, but they're transporting us to those worlds. We're able to see how we can fit in into your school's world. So I'm gonna give you two examples. Which school 
sounds like one you'd like to learn more about. Maybe not one that you necessarily want to attend because you might not be the ideal customer avatar, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but just think about from the descriptions and the little, little snippets here. We are independent preparatory day school for students from preschool through 12th grade. Very, very um, self-explanatory, right? It's great. Or we are an inclusive community on a mission to inspire unbounded curiosity and independent thought in every one of our students. In a unique educational environment that extends well beyond campus, we nurture students' knowledge of themselves and the world, expanding their full academic and personal potential while preparing them to lead lives characterized by thoughtfulness, integrity, and a quest to affect positive change. I didn't write these, my agency didn't write these, um, but I think that this is a really beautiful example. So these descriptions, guess what? They're from the same school. So this is actually what they had is more the story was on what some of you who work in the private independent school world um, is known as like the view book or the prospectus. And the other description was from the website. Now, of course we have stories that we can interweave in different ways but look at how that school, and I think it's wonderfully done both ways. You also, you need to be clear about who you're serving and what you are, but you also need to hook people. And when you're doing something expensive to design as a view book or perspective, you better well have a really great story in there. So jean carl I'm gonna turn it over to you to introduce the first breakout group activity. Okay, and so as I uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, we're we gave you a little bit of nuggets, some things to think about. Uh, we want to make sure that when you're in your breakout groups, you are comfortable and with, familiar with the people that are in your room. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put you into breakout groups. There'll be about four, five, uh, maybe three of you in a room. We're going to give you five minutes max. So keep your eye on the, the time. You'll see it in your breakout room. How much time is remaining? You only have five minutes. What we'd love for you to do, we want you to get to know each other before we get into the first activity. And so we want you to just take turns and introduce yourself, tell everybody where you're from, and introduce everybody to your school. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put you into breakout groups. If you are in a position, if your hair is done and if your hair is not done and you don't care, uh, cameras on is always better. Uh, definitely microphones on so we, everybody can hear you. You have five minutes, and I think in our back end, we are ready to put you into breakouts. Uh, so let's go ahead, put you into breakouts, and in five minutes, we're going to come back, and Amanda's going to continue uh, with some of the nuggets and put you into five uh, minutes. activity. Here we go. I think we've all come back, and hopefully we've all had a chance uh, to introduce ourselves. Now, there was more to the introduction than you would have thought. Amanda, Tell us why you had everybody introduce themselves. What was really going on there? Over to you. I just, I just really wanted to trip everybody up a little bit by giving you some examples of school descriptions. No, really, you know, we part of what we're doing as introductions and as school leaders, we're, we're part of the brand. The brand is really is an extension of our school. So whether and we do a lot of training on this and brand ambassadors whether you're an admissions representative, the communications director, the superintendent, the head of school, even the maintenance um, worker. My, my father-in-law was a maintenance worker at his school and everybody in town knew him and they'd always go to him asking for, hey, what's going on behind the scenes? One of the things that we have to realize is that we are part of the school's brand. And so how we introduce ourselves and introduce our schools lead into those school stories. And so um, one of the things that John Carl and I talk quite a bit about too on Clubhouse is how do we change those introductions and those descriptions for those people that we meet? And I think we have a worksheet for you after the workshop to kind of look at your ideal customer avatars and those people that you're really trying to target. But it's really important for you to, to think about how do we introduce ourselves and was there a sense of pride behind that? Do we use a story? How did other people represent themselves? And so we're gonna head into, and, I, and I'll let Giancarlo introduce it in terms of reflection, because as we know with leaders, one of the key components on how we always improve is to reflect on our activities. So Giancarlo, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, and so what just happened is you introduced yourselves to each other, which means you just got a bunch of examples of introductions. Now, based on what Amanda shared earlier around, you know, several key elements like emotion or capturing, uh, holding attention and transporting people into the world. What we want you to do in your groups is we want you to reflect on the introductions that you heard in your group. And as a team, what, what we're going to do is get you to capture what are key elements that you guys felt in examples that you heard 
that made for great strong introductions. Welcome back everybody. Probably you wanted more time, uh, but that was enough time. What Amanda was doing in the background was taking a look at some of the commentary that you were doing. She's now gonna give you a reflection on some of the common elements uh, that she noticed. Also some things that stood out and some things that she might've noticed uh, that were missing. So I'm gonna hand it over to Amanda, uh, your reflections based on what you were noticing the different groups uh, were doing. Over to you, Amanda. All right, I'm still busy writing writing things down, but great job, everyone. And I know it's always, we just love team projects, don't we? Especially if you're in Eastern time zone like I am at this late in the day, but definitely appreciate all the wonderful insights. And I hope that you were able to share quite a bit and learn quite a bit. I saw some great things in the group. You know, we talked about attitude. Somebody mentioned smiling, the passion, which I think is really big, especially in schools, uh, communicating concisely, knowing the why, you know, why is it that we're here? Even if we're a public school, we're here for a reason, right? There is a why behind what we're doing. And then using authenticity as a way to connect with these potential families. Now, those are all great. I mean, you nailed it. Um, one of the things, a few things I wanted to caution you on, and this is, you know, I've been doing this for a long time. I've made a lot of mistakes in my career and I still continue to make mistakes. It's just all part of communications and, and working with families on the fly. But um, one of the things, and if anybody's ever seen themselves on a TV interview or, or recording yourself, especially now in the virtual world, we can see some of these cues that we're doing ourselves or some of the things that we're missing. So, you know, when it's easy to come across as over-enthusiastic, this is especially true in schools because we love what we do and we think that our school is the best and we know our school is the best. And this is like the place, like how could you ever think of another place to go to at this school? It's so incredible. Sometimes it gets a little, be a little bit overbearing, right? Um, so there's a really a fine line there and you have to find the fine line. Hey, you know what? If your school is all about enthusiasm through the roof and those are the types of students you want to attract, the types of families you want at your school, go for it. But the average school is probably going to be like somebody that wants some passion and they like their job, they like what they're doing, but not over the top. Like, how could you ever think of another school? This is the best place ever. Um, and you want to share all the great things sometimes that, that are happening at your school, but you also have to take cues from the people that you're with. You know, what are their social cues, even virtually, if you're doing a virtual tour or a virtual interview? Are they looking aside? Are they looking at their watch? Are they, are they looking around and you've been going on and on and on about the same project or the same area of your school for a while? So just keep that in mind as you're doing any kind of introduction or type of, um, you know, uh, uh, whether it's an admissions tour or a campaign or open house, whatever the case is, just don't go over the top and wanna to share everything all at once. It's just like a good story, right? You wanna tease them enough and for a lack of better terms where they're interested and they wanna learn more. One of the things I did see that was missing, um, and I'm sorry if somebody's got this in before I finish my notes, was to talk about the impact. So when we develop you know, the brand story, a lot of times, and this happened the very first private school as an admissions director at about 20 years ago, Parents would come in to me, and even though we were pre-K through eighth grade, they would come in to me with their three-year-old and say to me, where do your graduates go to school? Now that like college, like, and then that was like over the top a little bit. However, I learned from time and time again that people wanted to know like what happened. I do a lot of work now with public schools in the, in the career technical education sector. And it's the same thing. They wanna know, you know, what happens to your graduates after they leave? Do you stay in touch? Is there still a community? You know, what are you doing to impact? And I don't necessarily mean all of our students graduate and they go on to four-year colleges with scholarships. More so like what type of impact do you have on these students? What type of impact do you have on the community? How can parents be involved? So thinking about how you can shape that into your brand story, and I know that we just did introduction, so it's not fair for me to, to flesh this fully out, but just something to keep in mind as we go forward. And so Giancarlo, those were my, my big components. I think the one last one that I wanted to add, sometimes when we are doing, I'm sorry, my, my glasses are reflecting off every single screen here, so I'm gonna have crazy hair. Um, sometimes when we're introducing ourselves, we tend to get into a historical timeline. We introduce our school, um, particularly if you're a private or independent parochial school, you go through the historical timeline. Here's the thing, is that nobody needs to know all the little components. That's something you can follow up an email or give them a brochure or point them to some place on their website. What you wanna get to, and I saw one of the groups that mentioned this, is your why. Like why was the, if, if it was independent private school, why was the school founded? What challenge did you wanna overcome? What 
type of adversity did you create the school or the founder create the school to overcome? And what, what do they do to serve people? And if it's a public school, it's the same thing. You know, what is the why? Like, how long have you been there? But we don't need to hit every single milestone. Like this building was built in this state and this building was built at this state. And then we introduced this program, this state. We don't need to do that. So just a couple of things to keep in mind. John Carlo, I'll turn it over to you. Brilliant. No, so now we've gotten a little bit of nuggets uh, related to, uh, you know, storytelling, what's important. Hopefully we've given you an exercise and experience on how you've introduced your school, but also how others introduced their schools. And now we're starting to think about some of these concepts. What we're going to have Amanda do now is take us through some more uh, pieces of knowledge and nuggets that we can start thinking about and internalizing. And we're going to do one more breakout so that we can apply it into our own context. Uh, and then uh, we'll do the same thing. Amanda will give us feedback uh, and then we'll wrap up the session. So Amanda, back over to you to, to uh, give us some more uh, nuggets around uh, storytelling for schools. Over to you. Okay, great. So I'm just going to um, bring my screen back up here. So we we're talking about, oh, is it, did it not come up? There it is. So important storytelling tips. So now we're moving beyond the introduction, right? So now we, we're figuring out our why, we're figuring out what really is the story of our school? Who is it that we want to connect with? And we don't have time to get into all the tactical components, but I want to give you some things to think about as we do go, uh, go through the next exercise. So some important storytelling tips. You want to be aspirational, but relatable, right? Like you don't want to be so far out that, um, that families can't see themselves. You want people to say to themselves, you know, they could be our family one day. And my, my kids go to a public school, but I work with a lot of private schools. But I have to tell you, when we transferred into a public school last year, we saw everybody running around at the family picnic. And for us, it was like, wow, that could be our family at the family picnic next year. And that could be our family that's attending that performance. So thinking about how are you telling those stories so that your target audiences can see themselves in your school community. You also wanna demonstrate how your school helped a student or alumni overcome a challenge or a problem. And this will, feed, I promise you, this will feed your storytelling funnel for years, literally years. That's the best part. That's what I love so much about educational storytelling. You know, it's uh, for example, wow, I can't believe how successful that alum is after going to XYZ Academy. And this can be anything. I work with schools that serve a lot of ADHD students and just hearing the parents' testimonials of, wow, you know, my, my, I knew my son or daughter had it and they were a C or D student at their other school and then they came to this school and they're getting B's and they're so happy and they have friends and they're overcome social anxiety or, you know, whatever it is that your target market is or your target audience, find those successful stories. Look at those students and alumni. How did you help them overcome a challenge? And just think about it. If you're a micro school where you've got 10 students or your private school is 500 students or your public school district with 100,000 students, think about how many students have been served over the years, how many families have been impacted and affected and how have you helped them overcome a challenge or problem and find those champions that are willing to talk about it. And then remember, it, you actually have to tell a story. So it's not just facts and stats. And 15 years ago in school marketing, it was, you know, especially in the, in, if you've ever worked in private school, in the private school was our student to teacher ratio is this, and our students get X number of scholarships per year. Those are important stats to a lot of audiences, but shape the story around it. Don't tell your ideal family or student how great you are demonstrate your impact because remember it's about impact this is what we're doing you're going to transform from a to b after coming to school your family is going to be connected in this way your student is going to reach their goals because of what we're doing here so tell that story and the way that you can tell your story there are a lot, a lot of different ways how i like to do it i'm just going to give you guys a couple of examples i like to use strong photos and bold imagery it helps people connect the story and visualize it and yes, I have a professional photographer on staff, but I can tell you 90% of the time when I'm in a school, if I don't have a photographer, I have my iPhone. And iPhone has great, it has a portrait setting that just makes me so happy. I do almost all my videos on there. I do Canva from the phone to be able to post. So you can utilize this, but they go hand in hand, right? So you can take a great photo with, with your iPhone, with any kind of phone and be able to use that to help shape the story. Because sometimes for me, I need to be able to visualize it to be able to write the story around it and vice versa. When I'm writing the story, it might come to me and go, you know what, I need a photo to demonstrate that and not a stock photo. Let me go out and shoot a photo on campus. 
So I wanted to show you, so these are some examples. This hopefully will help foster. These are from schools of all sizes, all types, public, private, that our photographer Derek did. He gets 1,000% of the credit because he has a vision. But just think about, you've got the story that you're telling right through words, which I'm a wordsmith, so that's what I do. But then you also have the story that you can tell through photos. You know, and as you look at this, think about if you are in this ideal target market, like I said, these are going to be, be um, different schools of all different sizes, but you have students, students eating lunch together. Obviously, this one was pre, this actually, unfortunately, was about two days before the pandemic hit last year. How are, the, how are these stories being told? How are they being told through visuals, right? If photography does not have to be, be a big part of your budget and it does not have to be posed. I am not a fan of posed photos, although this one was pretty cute, but Think about what are, what are the things that are happening in your school every day? This is a simple picture of a student just up against against the window working on an assignment, right? You've got maybe this this picture, some of us marketers might go, you know what, that's not a perfect picture. There's a little girl emptying her, her tray into the trash behind it. But you know what? Look at that little one in the front. Look at those dimples, look at that smile. That tells a big story to me about what's happening in the school. I think this is pretty cool. I have a daughter almost this age and this one looks like she's pretty comfortable in the classroom sitting on. And then, so what's the story behind it? I'm just gonna kind of keep going through these. So you have students of all ages, all backgrounds, doing sorts, all sorts of different things. And one thing I also wanna share, and I'm really big on this, and if I have any teachers in here, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you're doing. Big component of storytelling, whether you're a private, public or independent school, are the people who are actually teaching the students. These are the people that children are gonna be with eight hours a day, whether they're virtual or in the classroom. Do not forget about their stories. I just did a pitch with Good, um, uh, Good Housekeeping today with um, nine different schools from across the country. And we were able to share some of these teacher stories and these stories were phenomenal. They have great stories. They help shape the children that, are, that you are serving. So think about them. The school nurse. I mean, how important is a school nurse right now during the pandemic, the school social workers? Tell those stories. Those are all people who shape the stories, right, of your school. They shape the brand. And then you can utilize. These were all, the, most of these except that top right one, which is one that I did about 17 years ago. So that's how old this is. But most of these were done on, the rest were done on Canva on my phone. So using a photo and upload, a simple template that I did and pulling a quote from interviews that I conducted. So you have these interviews and then you can pull the quotes, you match it with the photo and you call it a day. And that could just be the initial part of your strategy. I'm big into strategy. As a, I firmly believe in it. But if you don't have the resources right now to begin telling the story, sometimes you just need to get in there and create and figure out from there. With that, I'll turn it back over to Giancarlo. All right, some great nuggets, some more great nuggets. And I'm just going to quickly recap for all of you. Uh, we heard about, you know, be uh, in aspirational, but make sure you're relatable. So you want people to see themselves in your school. Uh, you also want to make sure you're communicating now, how your school has helped uh, students or alumni overcome a challenge. And so, uh, you know, how you tell that success story is so important. And of course, how you're demonstrating this impact through the use of visuals, right? Photos and imagery. It doesn't have to be, you know, high end. You could use your, your phone, but you're telling and you're uncovering the stories, the real stories that paint those pictures of your students and of your, of, uh, of your teachers and staff as well. So now that you have these concepts in your mind, what we're going to do is put you into breakout groups because we want you to start really internalizing these concepts and start thinking about how you have utilized some of these strategies and how you're already utilizing some uh, within your school. And we want you to share it with others because what we want you to do in your groups is start compiling a list of these examples that relate to these concepts that Amanda shared so that you have concrete, you know, examples from your own school, but from other schools of how you turn these concepts into practice. Okay, welcome uh, back everyone. Uh, uh, hopefully uh, that we gave you a chance to start uh, internalizing some of the concepts and thinking about how you're already doing them uh, within your schools and also uh, get a chance to hear how other people are materializing it. So now you have a plethora of examples. Um, what Amanda was doing was taking a look at what it is. She's gonna give you a little bit of a synthesis, uh, but what I should note is that after this, we're gonna kind of collate all the different ideas uh, and we'll have a report out to you uh, 
afterwards uh, and especially for those who weren't able to join us live but amanda what did you notice as uh, people were sharing their examples over to you john carla some phenomenal ideas and and just to keep it brief i've broken it up between channels tactics and what we could be thinking about. I don't want to necessarily say it's missing, so channels. So this is the way that we're communicating our stories. These are the platforms. We talked about website. I saw Instagram, I saw Facebook. Somebody talked about Google ads, um, other conversations around the school blog. So these are all great channels. Tactics, um, there was a lot of talk around alumni, which I love. I, I actually started my career in private schools in uh, the development office doing communication. So building those alumni databases, interviewing those alums, whether it's for the school blog or for marketing materials, hosting an alumni day on campus so they can come back to talk to juniors or seniors and, and kind of keep that connection going. Um, doing a day in the life of visiting an alum at his or her the university, doing a day in the life of a student, following them, talking about language day and promotion around the different cultures and languages spoken at your school, sharing stories of non-traditional students and ways that they are accepted into different post-secondary institutions, lifelong partners outside the classroom promoting that, which is big. And I'll tell you, I went to the University of Southern California the first time around, I actually did my master's and doctorate there. And that was how they got me because they talked about their network, their lifelong network. And I can tell you, it is very true about that. But I think that that's very really important, sharing those stories. Um, others, teachers, nurses, and alumni either write a blog or interview them for the blog, have a questionnaire on your website to capture those testimonials. Um, another big one, again, because I, like I said, I worked in development, videos with donors to document the why. Um, when I was in elite private school, we actually had a whole list of different pictures and donors, um, kids and activities that we'd have to go and take pictures of throughout the year for the end of the year headmaster's dinner. So we did the storytelling for those bold photos like I showed you, we did that 15 years ago. And I'm talking about the international programs and those stories, another huge component. And the last one, the last one that I snuck in that I saw was you know if you're having masks if there's kids are still wearing masks show it I have to a thousand percent agree with this because sometimes now I see things that are posted on social media and I see a group of kids that don't have masks on that have their arms around my first thought is is that school not playing by the COVID safety rules because what's going on there and I know it's really hard I showed you some examples of pictures some of them were done two days before the world shut down those can be used for marketing materials on the website later on, but if you're talking about social media and one of the tactics I'm gonna share with you here in a second, use the masks, you know, if that's how it is. And, and you, can't, you can't go wrong. We don't know how long these masks will be around for, unfortunately. A couple of things that I saw that were missing, or I noted that were missing, I want you to keep in mind with. We had somebody had just um, added in the blog, use these content creations for the blog. Interview families, interview alums, interview students, interview teachers, interview staff, put them on the blog. Blogs drive search engine optimization. So when students and families and parents are looking for schools in your area, your, your, um, we talked about Google, somebody talked about Google AdWords, you will show up in those native search results with SEO. So put them on the blog, actually write, write them in there, not a PDF. My baby public relations, nobody was talking about media, how we can utilize these stories for the press. And when we say press nowadays, we don't just mean the print publication. A lot of There's still a lot of print publications around. We could be talking about influencer blogs. There are a lot of mommy blogs and family blogs that don't run printed materials anymore, but they have huge, huge, huge followings that then they will share out on social media. There are TV stations still. There are podcasts. There are YouTube channels. Share these stories. You can repurpose them. Also, hype. I call them hype blast to accepted students who have not enrolled. So students who have been accepted to your school for private independent schools, but they have not enrolled, show them what they're missing, fear of missing out, right? They're not a hard sell. These are, this is what's happening on campus. Hope to see you there in the fall and do those regularly, monthly is what I suggest. And then also finally the last one, e-newsletters. Everybody has e-newsletter to their families. Instead of just, just sharing, hey, these are the events that are happening next week. These are the events that happened last week. Here's a picture. And don't forget to donate to the annual fund. Share those profiles that you're gonna be writing so that, that way you're getting multi-purpose out of them. So hopefully this, this was helpful. Um, I don't know, John Carl, you want me to share my last slide with um, my contact information here just so everybody can have me? Okay, perfect. So if you need me for anything, 
You can reach me on the different platforms here, um, Twitter, Clubhouse, Facebook, Instagram. There is my website. There is my email address. If you have questions or you need clarification or you'd like to sh have an example so that maybe you can push through some extra budget money in your marketing campaign so you can do photography or do a new website or do a marketing campaign or have somebody help with social media, I will gladly share. I collect resources from schools all over the world. And I'm sure that if I don't have an example, I can find an example for you. And so I really appreciate your time and I hope to connect with all of you offline. Oh, Amanda, thank you so much. We're so delighted that you're able to share your expertise uh, with us today. And, you know, you should note that following this uh, session, we will send you uh, uh, Amanda's information. She also has a little nugget there uh, of insight for you as well. And we'll synthesize uh, everything that happened in this session, as well as your notes. Uh, we're not going to attribute it, but we're going to do general uh, themes that were covered uh, so that you can uh, have a synthesis of what happened in the other breakout groups as well. Amanda, we're super grateful for you to join us today and also super grateful for smart for putting on this series uh, and then we covered so many different topics uh, if you missed them you got to check out some of the other topics that we've covered in this series but hopefully it's been helpful for you today I'm going to hand it back over to Katie uh, who's going to wrap up our session for us today awesome thank you so much Giancarlo and Amanda for that great uh, synthesis and all of your fantastic information um, we will be certainly reaching out to you with the details of what, you know, all of the conversation today, we'll be putting together um, our, you know, blog posts of our own about that, um, and, and encouraging you to, to check those out and share them uh, with your colleagues as well. So uh, look for some follow up from us, uh, probably next week. Also wanted to remind you about that tool that we chatted about at the beginning, um, getting the whole picture of what's happening with your school or with your district with the EdTech assessment tool, we encourage you to, to go on and do that. Um, you know, get started with any of the modules. Uh, it's super easy and super actionable um, to help you understand where you are today and where you can take some steps for improvement. Uh, what's the foundation of your story? This is a great way to, to see and understand that. So thank you so much to all of you. Uh, we know we went a little bit over time. So thank you for staying with us. Thank you for being part of this event or this series. I know for some of you, you've been to a few of these. So we're really grateful uh, that you're here, that you shared your time and energy with us. And we look forward to connecting again soon.